As the wheels of my luggage touch the tarmac of Paris's Charles de Gaulle Airport, a shiver runs down my spine, a cocktail of anticipation and trepidation. In my nostrils hang the lingering scent of my mother's spicy kimchi, the sweet aroma of my father's freshly baked bread, and the salty air of the Busan beach where I played football till dusk. But the unfamiliar whirl of Paris's air, laced with a far distant tinge of crepes, roulettes, and the distinct French wine, whispers of a journey yet to unfurl from within its culinary bosom. My heart beats in rhythm with the echoes of the bustling airport, resonating with an infectious energy. Every face that passes by carries a unique story, etched in the lines of their brows, the perpetual motion of their eyes, mirroring my own story's continuing chapter. Yet within the sea of strangers, I am but a lone Korean soul, a world away from home, seeking to weave his narrative into the rich tapestry of the French gastronomic tradition. Each step towards the customs is backed by years of striving, of molding the very essence of myself into a craft I've held close to home. My hands, firm from years of kneading and shaping dough, are anxious for the feel of an unfamiliar challenge, a new blend of experiences that is quintessentially Parisian. The realization of finally setting foot in the city that has been, up until now, a mere distant dream tucked into the corners of my wanderlust-filled heart, is a heady cocktail of emotions, bubbling with exhilaration. There's an undeniable adrenaline rush when the unmistakable accents of French chatter fill my ears. A river of syllables and intonations, foreign yet fascinating, mediocre in their familiarity from countless textbooks yet magical in their authenticity. Lingering on the edges of comprehension, I find myself grasping onto every nuance, as though they are lifelines thrown out in a sea of alien tongues. Suddenly, amidst the whirlpool of change and displacement, the soothing murmur of my mother's words tenderly gush in. Wherever you go, your roots will keep you grounded. I can almost feel her hands powdered with flour, brushing my cheek in a familiar, comforting touch. Her faith in my culinary expedition is a beacon of courage, kindling a spark of determination that fuels my journey. Even as I am consumed with the enormity of being in the City of Lights, my father's life lessons echo in my head, reminding me to stop and appreciate beauty around me. His assurance, hewn, seek flavors beyond the palate, seem to echo in the orchestra of French street musicians humming in the distance, the symphony of footsteps hustling about, the visual spectacle of intricate architectures lining up like notes on a sheet of music. Parisian lights start to blur, transforming into my coveted dream, a glimmering promise awaiting fulfillment. As I begin this new chapter, cradling the heartful of strings tying me to my homeland, the weight of my ambition feels like a badge of honor, my own culinary validation. The city of love opens her arms to embrace my humble dream, dreaming not of love but of culinary mastery. Let the grandeur begin. The first day at Le Cordon Bleu, I could still easily recall that overwhelming moment. My heart was pounding like a bass drum, a relentless soundtrack to my new journey in the absence of familiar faces and comforting Busan shores. All around me, stainless steel counters glistened as eager faces peered into the ovens, the steamy aroma of rustic French breads embracing every corner of the coursework. It was thrilling, nerve-wracking and exhilarating all at once, an intoxication of emotions that was as palpable as the goodness of the camembert cheese kept for tasting. Everyone buzzing around with surges of culinary ambitions, student cooks from around the world, from the ones aspiring to master stocks to those hoping to tame the tempest of souffles, all of us united by the surge of motivation, the echoes of shared dreams, and an insatiable hunger for culinary mastery. The diversity was fascinating, culturing a melting pot of collective enthusiasm each of us adding unique flavors to the broth of experiences, enriching it with our zest to learn and aspire. For me, the excitement was amplified. This was not just the start of an education. This was a step forward to fulfilling the ambitions kindled under my mother's warm, radiant smile, back in a small bakery in Busan. Every second I spent there my senses were heightened, my being was pulsating with an invigorating energy that the bustling streets of Seoul held not a candle to. Every need, every slice and every simmer was a connection being formed between me and the culinary heartbeat of France, a wonderful intertwining of personal aspirations with collective passions. Yet there were moments of struggle, too, amidst this torrent of emotions. Nostalgia washed over me in waves, tinges of homesickness concealed behind the thrill of the unfamiliar. 
There were times I would catch myself humming to an old Korean ballad during class breaks, the melody a soothing balm over the minor bruises of embracing a new culture. My broken French statements would often receive amused smiles, making me laugh along, in the realization that all of us, despite our different backstories, were united in our innocence at this nascent stage. The beginning was daunting, yes, but at the end of the day, there was this sense of satisfaction, a strange tranquility in the midst of the whirlwind. The alien cuisine started to feel more like a friend, a familiar one, the one whose distinctive nuances were slowly unveiling themselves to me. The rigorousness was challenging, asserting its dominance over my budding culinary skills, challenging me to push the boundaries, to step out of the comforting familiarity of my homeland's flavors and delve into the richness of the unfamiliar. At the end of my first month, as I lay in bed at my tiny Parisian quarters, gazing out at the illuminated skyline, I thought, what a journey I have embarked on. The atrium of uncertainty had finally opened its doors to this new life, and I was walking right into it, a mere speck amongst the bright pool of ambitious minds, drawing inspiration from the same and evolving as a better version of myself. The crucible of fine dining was all set to mold a humble, driven chef from Busan into a true gastronome. It felt like I was walking into the garden of possibilities, woven within the heart of the city with an appetite for life, all I could see was a path laden with nutrients for my culinary blossoming, a promising road of enriching experiences leading the way to my ultimate goal. Let the needing begin. August 2018. I remember it was a balmy Friday afternoon when we were assigned our first big project. Chef Delacroix, the hard-faced but soft-hearted head instructor, had tasked us with baking our first baguette in the school's professional bakery setting. My heart pounded as I clutched the well-thumbed recipe my gaze constantly flicking back and forth from the short yet daunting instructions to the raw materials laid out before me. It was a simple task on paper, but its execution was a different story. There were many mixed sentiments, but I relied on my past experience, the homeschooled hours spent in the family's bakery, laboriously kneading dough and scaling bread loaves. It felt like a challenge thrown directly at me by Paris, a proverbial gauntlet layered with flour and yeast. Sometimes it seemed ironic how I had traveled so far, across mountains and seas, only to grapple with the beauty and meticulousness of this rustic bread, a symbol of French countryside life, the baguette. But I was up for it, I had come for this. With a light heart and firm determination, I began to follow the traditional recipe that dates back to the 19th century. Kneading the dough felt almost therapeutic, the familiar rhythm slipping me into a state of placidity, despite the high stakes. I channeled all my focus into the dough under my palms, listening to its whispers and followed its tempo. It was like a delicate orchestration, a gentle waltz between the hands and the wheat, a sensual dance under the silent symphony of the heat. And then came the time to slide the dough into the beast-like oven. As I carefully stoked the fire, every tick of the clock reverberated in my mind, my skin prickled with a shower of anxiety and anticipation. The temperature was set as the minutes slowly rolled by. I compulsively checked the oven, my palms now slick with perspiration, flashing back to the countless times I had burnt the loaves back in the Busan bakery. But the hours of hard work bore fruit when I finally took out the baked baguette from the oven and held it in my hands. Despite the intense emotions coursing through me, there was a sense of calmness, as if I had just finished a marathon and was now bathed with this surreal reality, a product of my commitment and passion. I stared at the beautifully baked baguette, a rustic brown crust hugging the light, airy interior. My heart swelled with a sense of accomplishment as everyone around me nodded appreciatively, their thumbs-up gestures pushing out a sigh of relief and a beaming smile from me. I had done it. It was a small stepping stone, but a giant leap in my culinary journey. That little bakery in Busan had trained me in more ways than I had ever imagined, and now it was gifting me a string of successes in the heart of European culinary arts. Each day was a learning experience, each moment in the bakery was precious, and my first professional baguette was a symbol of a new chapter, a new me. The words, learning how to cook is not just about flipping recipes, it is about mastering the finesse of creation. Echoed in my mind, the static hum of satisfaction making me look forward to tomorrow with an even greater fervor. It was indeed an amazing journey, a voice whispering in my ear, you can do it, Hyun. You have only just started. It was January 2019, 
a full seven months after I had ventured so far from home. The cold winter was striking, much unlike the milder winters of Busan. I found myself bundled up with layers upon layers, but my heart was warmed by the activity and the hustle surrounding me here in Paris. With every passing day, I was continuously reveling in my decision of stepping out of my comfort zone and embarking on this exhilarating culinary journey. Just when I thought I had seen everything, life introduced me to something, or rather someone who would add a beautiful dimension to my journey. Her name was Isabelle, a fellow student at Le Cordon Bleu. I first saw her at a school event, her long chestnut hair cascading down her shoulders, her bright hazel eyes shining like stars, and an unforgettable vivacity that simply left me smitten. It was that day when I greeted her with a simple bonjour. It was that exact moment that I felt a magnetic pull. Our initial conversations were fascinating, filled with shared passions, dreams, and sprinkled with light, hearty laughter. The warmth of her being and the sincerity of her friendship touched me in ways I couldn't succinctly describe. In a city unknown, amidst the labyrinth of lanes and boulevards, labyrinth of hearts and dreams, I found myself forming a connection that was unbeknown to me until then. Every shared smile, every burst of shared laughter, every word exchanged under the blanket of stars, all the stories about dreams and dreads in the dormitory said enough, but still left many unsaid. We gravitated towards each other, like two stars revolving around their common center of mass. Only this time, it was not gravity, but a shared passion for food and life that held us together. Next week, I asked, and she responded with a simple nod and a bright smile. The following days were spent in more conversations, shared meals, walks under the Parisian moonlit sky, and moments that silently whispered tales of companionship. Each moment spent with her was a volt charging the magnet strengthening the pull with every passing day. Finally, it was on a quaint winter evening in Paris, two weeks after our friendly dates had begun, when I mustered the courage to pop the question, to officially move from the friend zone to the lover's zone. The nervousness of the moment, the anticipation, the heartbeat echoing in the empty streets of Paris, all disappeared when she responded with a gentle, yes, nothing changed, yet everything did. From being friends chased by dreams to being lovers still chased by dreams, our journey was a beautiful potpourri of passion, friendship, warmth, and love. We were jazz in the romantic city, resonating with its rhythm and creating our own music. We were cooking dreams on the same stove, basting it with memories and letting it simmer on the flame of our shared love. We were the taste in the patisserie, the fragrance in the wine. We were Isabel and Hyun, two foodies in love in the city of love. The days that followed were a whimsical blend. We would often find ourselves talking late into the night about food, about dreams, about everything. Sketched into these nights were laughter, full-hearted and light, and there was a charm about it that was truly captivating. Everything was so beautifully different even though we had been friends before. I remember how we would take walks along the winding lanes of Paris talking about everything from the best wines to our shared dreams. The meals we shared were always a delight a true celebration of our shared passion for food. Isabel would often say that food tasted better when with someone you loved, and I found myself agreeing. Our walks would often lead us to the parks where we would sit under the shimmering moonlight. Paris really became the city of love with her by my side. And then, of course, there were those fantastic cooking dates. Oh, how we loved cooking together. From experimenting with spaghetti to perfecting the classic coque au vin, we made the best out of our shared passion. The moments we spent in the kitchen, creating and tasting new dishes were the golden moments. There was something about cooking together that really brought us closer. The smell of fresh herbs, the taste of raw ingredients, the way our hands worked in sync when kneading the dough. It was as if food, our shared love, was binding us together. Two weeks into this rhythm and my heart longed to take the next step. Rephrasing, retelling, and refining the question in my mind a thousand times over. One evening, under the glow of the amber street lamps, I looked into her eyes and asked her if we could be more than just friends. Next week, I remember asking, and Isabel responded with a simple nod and a wide smile that I had come to adore. The uncertainty, the nervousness from that moment dissipated in an instant, replaced with a comforting warmth and a promise of love. Yes, nothing really changed, yet everything did. Our friendship evolved into a romance stitched with shared dreams. The simplicity of our companionship got beautifully complex, in a delightful way. 
And there we were, just Isabel and me, two foodies in love in the city of love. Our journey, our stories, our shared dreams and love were all wrapped in the aura of the glowing city and unfolding like a symphony that we were in perfect sync with. Our love story was not just in every corner of the city, but also in every morsel that we cooked together. It was Paris like never before. Paris through the eyes of two lovers, two food lovers and... Having just graduated from one of the most prestigious culinary schools in the world, I felt invincible, with the feeling of finishing one chapter and embarking on a new one. But Isabel's departure was a poignant note in an otherwise joyful symphony. I'd always admired her vivacity. She had a spirit that was contagious, and it had always found a way to soothe my initial anxieties. However, all things must pass, and there we were, face to face, our eyes refusing to give away too much. I am going back to Korea, I mumbled, fumbling over each word as if they were foreign and the language I was speaking was not mine. There was no protest. She knew this as well as I did, ever since our first cooking date. And as I spilled out my confession in that humble Parisian cafe, she cupped my hands across the table. A sadness draped her usual bright countenance, but she understood as she always did. We were always more than the Seine River, more than these cobbled streets. We were always bigger than this city, she said. It was simultaneously the most touching and heartbreaking thing I had heard. Her words echoed through the upcoming weeks, especially during our final days together in the City of Lights. She was right. Even if our story had unraveled in the shadow of the iconic Eiffel Tower, we had always been more than just a couple in love in Paris. We were two souls intertwined by a shared passion, experiencing life's profound energies and soaking in every moment. All the I love you's whispered and promises of forever. They were not just assertions of an ephemeral passion in this city, but rather universal affirmations that echoed with the same intensity and vibrancy beyond its borders. Our bond, though ephemeral, was etched in my heart forever. We were just like a recipe, a fantastic blend of remarkable ingredients, melded together on the stove of love, only to be served out too soon. My last day in Paris was a bitter blend of euphoria and melancholy of celebrating an accomplished chapter and bidding adieu to a person who had a pivotal role in it. As the ardor of the Parisian sunset painted the city in hues of pastel, I felt a sense of closure. The city had given me so much, admiration, growth, memories, and above all, a love that was insurmountably beautiful. Now it was time for a new city, a new chapter, and maybe new flavors too. After all, this is the journey of life, a menu of experiences spiced with love, joy, and sometimes goodbyes too. The lingering image of Isabel, that spring morning, was etched onto my mind. It was a memory that would stay with me far long after I had taken my leave of Paris. I carried the tender moments, the shared laughter, the quiet nights and the culinary adventures we had together on my flight back to Seoul. For a moment, it felt like I was transporting a piece of Paris, a taste of France with me, all stored up in the form of cherished memories. I was now to reestablish myself in the familiar yet changed landscape of Seoul, a city that was teeming with its own surprises and opportunities. Side by side, I began to comprehend that I could draw strength from the departure and the subsequent journey ahead. After all, the thrill of a new city, a fresh start, and the promise of a brighter culinary future lay just over the horizon. Isabel's faith in my potential was also undeniable fuel, propelling me to strive even harder, to become a culinary force to be reckoned with. The idea of finding and creating my own space within the vibrant and fast-paced world of soul was both thrilling and daunting. I could feel my heart fluttering with a mix of anticipation, apprehension, ambition, and I couldn't lose my way. I had a purpose, an objective that was guiding me. Yet, underlying this was a whisper of sadness, a hint of vulnerability, a tinge of longing for what had been left behind. Yes, I missed Paris. I missed my mentor, my friends, my school and most imperatively I missed Isabel, but I was also ready to embrace the life ahead. A new chapter was unfolding for me, one that would see me diving deeper into the culinary roots of my homeland while staying true to the French techniques I had mastered. I was returning home with a renewed sense of identity as a Le Cordon Bleu-trained chef, equipped with the wisdom of two contrasting but equally rich food cultures, ready to create culinary magic where the flavors of France met the heart of Korea in unison with other ambitious chefs who, like me, were carving out their destinies in the cosmopolitan kitchens of Seoul.
I was ready to rise up to the challenges that awaited me. I was ready to put in the long hours, deal with the scorching heat, the high stakes of restaurant life, all while constantly recalling what Isabel had once said, we were always bigger than this city. I now knew what she meant. My love for food, my passion, my determination, they weren't confined to one city, one person, or one memory. These were all a part of who I was, my ingredients, and they transcended geographical and cultural boundaries. They were my essence, my strength, and they would be my guide in this exciting new chapter of my life and soul.